Be sure to stay tuned for a surprising fun fact on algae. Today, we're going to be talking about competitive exclusion, which is basically removing the food source for the algae, causing it to starve. This includes our top 10 ways to deal with pond algae. Number one, sunlight. Algae is a photosynthetic plant. This means that it relies on sunlight to grow. So, if you want to limit the amount of algae that you have in your pond, limit the amount of sunlight. By limiting the amount of sunlight, you can cause your pond to clear up beautifully and naturally. This can include growing plants that provide a good shade cover, like water lilies, water hyacinth if it's legal in your area, and other types of covering plants. Number two, pond muck. Pond muck is absolutely a food source for algae. You need to remove it as much as you possibly can. Remove the muck from your filter by being careful to preserve the bacteria colony and definitely do not ever overclean your filter. Additionally, if you have inches of muck on the bottom of your pond, you are feeding your algae bloom. Sometimes a professional pond cleaning will be necessary and that's where you need to hire a professional to come on out and take care of that problem. Removing the muck is removing the food. Number three, overfeeding. Have you ever thought about the fact that what you're feeding your fish, you're feeding your pond? Well, it's true. If you have fish that aren't eating all the food that you're leaving for them, make sure you remove it. Get a net and toss it in the yard. It's way better than having a pond that's going haywire. Overfeeding is one of the most common problems with your pond water quality. It can cause cloudy water and it can cause algae. Make sure you do not overfeed. Speaking of overfeeding, number four, don't buy cheap food. Cheaper foods are very high in phosphate, which is also a food source for algae. Always remember, whatever you're feeding your fish, you're feeding your pond. And if you have a food that is high in phosphate, you're going to create a nightmare for your pond. Learn to read the guaranteed analysis that's on your bag of food. And if you have a food source that you're feeding your fish that's high in phosphate, you are actually feeding your algae colony. Number five, control the pH. Did you know that a high pH, usually anything over eight, is also an ideal environment for algae. If your pond is gone high on the pH scale, then get a hold of your local pond supply store and purchase a pH reducing agent and a buffer which will lock that pH in. Your fish will be so happy and your algae will be so hungry. Number six, aeration. Did you know that decomposing organic matter on the bottom of your pond produces carbon dioxide? Well, carbon dioxide is also a food source for algae. So, by adding aeration to your pond, you're allowing that carbon dioxide to come to the surface faster, which removes the carbon dioxide from your pond as a food source, thereby starving your algae of food. So, aeration is a wonderful thing for your pond, not just for the purpose of removing algae, but also for your fish and for the rest of the ecosystem in your pond. We are huge supporters of aeration. Number seven, plants. Did you know that algae is a plant? Well, if you also plant your pond with larger plants, then the bigger plant will outcompete for the same food source. So, the bigger plant eating more food leaves nothing for the smaller plant, algae, to eat. Algae loses. I refer to this as my teenager, Friday night pizza, Saturday morning story. So if you have a teenager that likes pizza on Friday night with their friends and Saturday morning you want to go to the refrigerator and eat the leftovers, guess what? There's nothing left. You lose, the teenager wins. Same thing with algae. Take away its food source, algae can't survive. So plants are a very necessary and important ingredient for your pond. Number eight, don't bleed in your pond. 
According to an article called Glow in the Dark Algae, written by Carolyn Seidel on June 15, 2001 and published by ScienceMag.org, injecting a gene from red blood cells gave microalgae the power to grow in the dark. Normally, the microalgae rely on photosynthesis, but once re-engineered, they can take up sugar for energy instead. The first step towards growing microalgae without light was enabling the cells to take up glucose. A team led by molecular biologist Kirk Apt of Martech Biosciences Corp. in Columbia, Maryland, chose a human gene called GLUT1 that allows red blood cells to absorb glucose. When transplanted, the team reports in the June 15, 2001 issue of Science that it conferred the ability on microalgae. To Apt's surprise, no more engineering was necessary since the newly equipped microalgae could grow as fast in the dark as they did in sunlight. Apparently, the microalgae already contained the cellular machinery necessary to process the glucose efficiently. Apt hopes to apply his discovery to commercially useful microalgae species, but another species may not be as cooperative. He says, I don't expect it's going to be so simple in every case. Number nine, cannibal algae. According to LiveScience.com and an article written by Douglas Main written on November 21st, 2012 titled Algae Chows Down on Other Plants, when deprived of other food sources, a widespread type of green algae can break down other plant materials and slurp them up as food. A new study finds that it's the first time that a member of the plant kingdom has been shown to break down another plant's cellulose. The bipolymer that gives strength to plant cell walls and use it as an energy source according to new research. So, you still have to feed the algae a little, which is why it's a wonderful sight to see a thin, almost velvety surface of algae growing on the walls or the rocks in your pond. Number 10. Rain can cause an algae bloom. Have you ever looked at how beautiful the landscape is after a few days of spring rain? The grass is green and it just smells so great outside. Then your pond turns brown, then green. What may be happening is an abundance of nitrogen that came down with the rain. This nitrogen is a plant food for algae to thrive in your pond. To combat this, know your weather report and be sure to dose your pond with beneficial bacteria before the rain comes. The beneficial bacteria assist in completing the nitrogen cycle, thereby robbing algae of its food source. And that's another video. Sometimes an ultraviolet light is necessary for a pond that is under filtered or is just gone haywire. But follow these tips and you'll be less dependent on UV. We have built and serviced literally thousands of ponds and few by percentage of them have UVs. Oh, and by the way, we're in the desert region of Southern California. If this video helps you, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button to be notified when we add new construction, maintenance, and repair tips. Also, be sure to check out my website at www.columbiawatergardens.com and visit our Facebook page. I'm Carl with Columbia Water Gardens reminding you that algae matters. Happy ponding!